wants to be king? In my last video, I went in pretty hard on certain creators in the Manosphere red pill space. And since the release of that video, I've gotten a couple of DMs and messages on the message board from some of their lover boys. And they have either just regurgitated some of the, the dumb shit that these guys say or, you know, have pretty much in one way or another let me know that I've hurt their feelings for challenging the opinion of their boyfriends. Now, I'd like to take this moment right now to sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, I want to apologize. To absolutely nobody. The double champ does what the he wants. Listen. The Manosphere, the Manosphere has become really almost the same as a, a, a daytime television was for women in the 80s. The, this constant rhetoric and, and bashing of women, single mothers, marriage, all of these things are really, they're really nothing more than these weak men's projection and attempt to get other men to, to, to have the same feelings about them, to build their club of fucking losers, man. Now, I'm not saying that men who go through this stuff are losers, but when we come to this space, when men come to, when men come to the space, they don't come because they want to be entertained. Men come to red pill content because generally they go through some sort of devastation. They go through a divorce, a hard breakup, somebody cheats on them or whatever, whatever brings the individual to it. That's what, that's what it is. And what, in my opinion, what the red pill is supposed to be, is supposed to be looking at the truth, looking at the, looking at the world through the eyes of truth, not just focusing on the small minutia of women and relationships and dating, because that's really should be really such a very small part of a man's life, a man's focus. Now, granted, at the end, I believe that most most people would like to end up and find themselves in a position where they could share their lives with someone that they that they have a connection with. But the problem is, is our culture has become so sick in the way that we that we view one another. It, it, it's it's become a, a self fulfilling prophecy, and I'll give you I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. I'm 50 years old, and I remember when I was in high school, I've mentioned this before, when I was in high school, I remember hearing one of the older guys that, you know, that was experienced with girls, one of his, one of his morsels of golden information was treat, treat whores like queens and queens like whores. Now, that sounds crazy doesn't sound logical and all all of you know all of the natural things that will go through your brain but the the psychology behind that the, the psychology behind that is really it's it's meant to exalt someone who shouldn't be exalted and then try to belittle someone who should be exalted why why in the fuck would you treat a queen like a whore and on the other hand, vault a whore into a queen status. See, we listen to that shit. Those of us who 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 were fed that bullshit, we listened to it and we did that. We did we did that ad nauseum in the eighties and in the nineties. When I was in college, that's exactly what we did. We we treated good girls, we treated them badly. If we treated them any way at all, a lot of times if we knew that a girl had any morality, any value in herself, and she wasn't going to lay down and just let us do whatever we wanted to do, we wouldn't even waste the effort because she wasn't going to tolerate it. And so we went about our lives doing that, and many of us ended up carrying the same mindset into our adult years, and we married a whore that we treated like a queen, and then we wonder why. It, it ended up in a divorce and this person took everything that she could. You see, 
the one one of the things that I that I have issue with in listening to these guys and their constant vomiting of you know anti this anti that and all of their little goofy nicknames and acronyms that they have for people who don't subscribe to their own brand of loserdom is that these guys lack self-awareness and they lack the ability to look at themselves and say, you know what, maybe, maybe this happened because I'm a fucking dork. Maybe this happened. Maybe she cheated on me because I'm, I'm just a nerd. You know, maybe, maybe she did what she did because I'm not who I thought I was, or a lot of times who I pretended that I was. That's what a lot of men do. A lot of men go into these situations with these faulty bullshit memes about how things are supposed to work. And then when you get exactly what it is that you ask for, what you deserve, then all of a sudden you want to point the finger at someone else. See, the manosphere in a lot of this red pill shit it lacks one key ingredient, and that's self-awareness. It's accountability. It's self-accountability. It's taking a, it's taking it's taking responsibility for the things that have happened and saying, you know what, I own this. Even what that person did, it belongs to you as a man. But instead, uh, instead, our our culture has bred so many weak vaginal dudes that to hear that message, that, that's offensive. That right there makes you get into your, your feelings because you've grown up with everybody telling you that you sucking is someone else's fault and giving you a participation trophy. Life is not about participation trophies. And as a matter of fact, that should be an insult to anybody that's in competition. The fact that you're going to get a reward for merely showing up should make you not even want to compete. That's to me is one of the most ridiculous fucking ideas that we've come up with in this culture. And that's cultivated this, this pussified man that we have. Now, I know a lot of guys want to act, they want to believe that they don't fit this. Well, I've got a challenge here. See, there's no question that our culture, our society is falling apart. And this generation that's out in the streets tearing shit up, carrying signs, wearing goofy shirts and demanding that the patriarchy be torn down and claiming their own intersectional victim status. Those are all fucked up kids. The adults that are in there are fucked up because they got raised by weak men and bullshit women. This has been generational. This has been coming since the boomers had their kids and they had us. Then we had our entitled little fucking faggots. And then we, and then it goes down the line. That's the way this has happened. So for men to think that they somehow don't fit this, this, this weak man paradigm, yet you've got a, a child that's out in the streets with blue hair carrying a sign that's got ivory white skin, but they're screaming Black Lives Matter, or even better, you got a fucking monkey jumping up and down on cop cars, breaking windows talking about Black Lives Matter, and then turn around and shooting another black person because, I don't know, they got a different color fucking shoe that they got. Whatever. There's this. Our culture is, is in hell right now because we've got a lot of weak men. And for these guys to continuously propagate this idea of weakness and victimhood and just, just loser shit, it's not good for men. It's not good for men. I just saw a, an, another piece of a of a live about of the of the predictable stages of marriage in this same ridiculous fucking chart that goes through. See, here's the problem: marriage isn't is not is not an institution that is necessary today. It's it's not a necessity. People used to get married because that's the way you kept the society together. Shit was spread out. People died on the way over here, over there. You might lose half of your tribe trying to get over this mountain. And the cohesion of a society, marriage was an institution that helped help things work. But one of the dummies came into, into my comments and just regurgitated some bullshit about the, you know, marriages end in seven years because it's a planned extraction of resources, blah, blah, fucking blah, all this goofy loser shit. Well, it actually is a little bit deeper than that. It's it's actually biological. 
Just like a lot of these dudes like to talk this Rolo shit about a male's a biological imperative is to unlimited sexual fucking goofy shit. Well, it's also a, a woman's natural imperative to try to find the best situation for her and her, her, her offspring. It's always been that way. Hypergamy is not new. This idea that that's the reason and it's, it's a new phenomenon and all this bullshit. That's all horse shit. But all of these things that are consistent, consistently regurgitated are just projections of weakness. A lot of dudes, a lot of people get married because of the wrong shit. They get married for love. They get married because of they, they have children. They get married because they think that this person is somebody that they're not. Because everything is rushed. Everybody, especially men, they go into this shit with their emotions and they don't look at it logically. Men really believe that they can go to a strip club, pull a chick off the pole, make her a wife, and then wonder why she bounces. Well, biologically, it's seven years, it's called the seven year itch. And the reason why a lot of relationships go off the rails in seven years is because biologically, if you have a child, when they're seven years old, they're technically functional enough to not get eaten by the saber tooth or the, or the, the whatever monster is lurking. And so, our need to spread our genetics and do that back in the game back then it was important for that to happen the agogi, the agogi was the same way and at seven years old little boy would get ripped out of his mother's arms and the men would go scare the shit out of him make him go kill a lion with a pointy stick and if you didn't pull it off motherfucker you weren't a man in our culture, we don't have that. We got goofballs regurgitating the same shit. And this is the same, this is what I'm talking about. Mr. Sharp the other day posted some bullshit and all he did was reframe the treat queens like whores. And he said, if you treat a woman like a queen, she'll treat you like a commodity. If you treat her like a, a whore, she'll treat you like a king. This is, this is how simple people are. This is how much of a, a, a of a shyster this dude is. All he did was reword that same logic that got women to the place that they are and the men to the place that we are. This is all bullshit. So the thing that we have to do is we have to be accountable. You have to be accountable to what you brought into your life. You have to be accountable to what for what you allowed. Because all single moms aren't losers. All single moms aren't just sitting back looking for dudes to take care of their kids. As a matter of fact, the ones who don't do that aren't on the market. So these fucking guys that know everything are never going to come across these women. That's the way that this works. Most women who have any sort of value and who, who give a shit about their kids aren't going to cycle dudes in and out of their house hoping that one sticks. That's the way that responsible women handle having kids and the father's not there. All marriages aren't doomed to fail, but most of them are. Most of them are because most people get married for the wrong reasons. They don't go into it like it's a lifelong commitment. It's just something that's fucking fun right now. And she's hot or he's cool and he's rich or whatever shallow metrics. And when they get bored, it's over. Or the man thinks that a woman, he catches her, he wipes her up, he goes to work, and that's all he has to do, and she's supposed to stay there and be whatever he wants to be. Well, if that man's consistently moving forward and moving up and actually getting his grind on to where he's trying to get somewhere, then maybe that's that's a logical thing. But if that dude's going to punch the clock for someone that he hates and comes home bitching every night and expects the food on the table and expects her to listen to him bullshit, all that, and he's not doing anything about it, would you stick around? See, we've got to stop. We've got to stop with this one-sided bullshit because the reason that women are so delusional and fucked up now is because a long time ago, the third wave told them that all men were dogs. All men were this, all men were that. The women needed to do this and they needed to do this to men. And they listened. They taught it to their little girls and men never stood up. As a matter of fact, they submitted. They started saying goofy shit like happy wife, happy life. Even, even if she sat her ass home and did nothing while he went to work. Men are so cowardly today that instead of saying, you know what, dude, I don't, I'm not going to make that function because I got to go watch my kid play soccer. They'll pawn it off on the kid and go, you know, my kid's got this soccer game or my wife will kill me if I don't show up. 
those are cowards. You're a fucking coward if you're in that type of situation and you go through that type of situation and then the woman ends up leaving you and then you're going to cry on the internet about, man, she just go, I did everything. Yeah, you did everything except for be a man. See, that is the missing ingredient in everything that I hear. The accountability as men. Now, this channel right here, I'm not trying to align myself with anyone, be buddies with anyone, or get involved in any bullshit. I am legitimately trying to help men. In my own community, that's what I do. I help men. I, I, I have an organization that helps veterans that are fucked up that need to come up with a new strategy and plan about their lives. And through those guys, I help young guys find a purpose and plan and a set of balls and not be so vaginal in a society that wants to castrate them. I'm also trying to do some things and helping organize a different kind of education for boys so they don't have to sit down and get tamed and tampered down to be like little girls where we actually teach them math by doing things like learning how to read a tape measure, learning how to build something instead of sitting there teaching them some common core bullshit that's never going to make any sense in reality. Being a man is more than putting on a bunch of fancy clothes and posturing like you're some sort of fucking alpha or some sort of leader. It's not about talking. It's about doing. My Everything that I do, everything that I do personally, everything that I make from my camps, my clinics, everything that I do, it doesn't go toward buying Jordans, jumping on a rental boat so I can shoot a fucking video to try to impress you men so you can think that I'm living some lavish lifestyle. Look at me. I got, I ain't got no, I can't get no pussy, but look at this, guys. I can have a lot of fun and pretend like you can pull when you feel like it. That's all bullshit, man. That's that's just grifter shit. These dudes need you to stay weak. They need you to stay following them. They need you to stay subservient to this constant narrative of all of them are going to be this way. Just wait. You know somebody who's in a successful marriage? Just wait. Or she's cheating. These fucking losers need that to be true. They need that to be true. They need every woman to be a whore. They need every man who's involved with a woman on a personal level to be a simp or whatever goofy shit that they call them. They need that because they need your money. They need your money, not so they can further their ability to truly help men, but they need your money so they can go buy shit, so they can put it on a video, so they can continuously get money from you, making you think that if you keep following this little trail that they put forward, that you can end up doing the same thing. But that's not what it's about, friends. That's not what it's about at all. It's about keeping you weak and pathetic just like them while they put on this lion suit and pretend to be something. What I'm doing is I bring I bring men out to my property and I and I make them do men shit, team building activities. I make them think for real for themselves and together as a unit. I make them face themselves in reality instead of this bullshit ego that they show the rest of the world. Most of the time when you fail, Believe it or not, you have part of that failure. You're complicit in it, no matter what, no matter what. And if as a man, you can take responsibility for everything and stop looking at someone else to blame and looking to someone else to say the things that you want to hear. That's what this red pill community is. From the young ones, like the goofy Lonnie dude who, whose girl got tore up by his buddy and he cried about that shit in the building of his channel. He built the channel because a lot of young dudes are simps and crybabies just like him. And all he does is regurgitate the same shit that the old dudes say and they just pass the ball back and forth. And all of them build an empire because all of the men who follow them need to listen to that bullshit so they can get confirmation bias on what happened to them. It's not my fault. It's that bitch's fault because they're all that way. This channel is about accountability in your, in the mirror, the mirror that you look in. That's where it all starts. If you can take accountability for the shit that's happened that you've allowed to happen in your life because you've allowed it at any point, it's like an abused woman. The first time that dude goes upside her head, she does an exfil. At some point, she is not not so unhappy about what's going on that she has to go. At some point, you have to accept the responsibility 
for what you allowed to continue to happen. Instead of looking at the things that have happened in your life, instead of looking at the, the woman, the judge, the situation, instead of looking at the circumstances and blaming the circumstances and the other people that are involved, be a man. Take ownership of your, of, of your decisions to bring these people in your life in the first place, whatever it is. I'm not, I'm not excusing anybody's actions. It sucks when people do, do you dirty. But the key to all of these things is this. You are complicit in the choices that you make. You've got to understand that. You've got to, you've got to understand that that is a very real, a real part of what, what you've dealt with in your life that have brought, has brought you to this red pill content. Again, take ownership, 100% complete ownership of everything that's happened in your life. Instead of looking outward and saying it's their fault, look in the mirror, realize that it's your fault for not being who you were supposed to be, not being who you could be, not picking the right person to share your life with, not doing these things with intention. Take ownership for that because that's what you did. What the other person did to you, that's just an after effect of the choice that you made to have that person in your life in the first place. True change, true, true maturity, true masculinity comes from accepting the responsibility from the thing, for the things that come into our lives, especially the things that we invite willingly out.